Imran Ahmed is the founding CEO of the Center for Countering Digital Hate. He is a recognized authority on the social and psychological dynamics of social media. Who gave him the authority? Well, this guy has been working in politics for a very long time and is definitely working for some bullshit CIA, Patriot Act 3.0, Internet 3.0, intersectionality movement. Intersectionality is integral to the logic of neoliberal colonialism and carcerality. And this guy is the head of it. And now Elon Musk is um, suing him because he had this, the statistics that they use to, you know, justify or to define hate, first of all, their definition of hate is, their definition of abuse is by the day getting worse and worse. And why is it that we have all of this white supremacist hate on the internet today anyway. Well, it's the exact same thing as what was m promoted by the intersectionality power equals privilege constantly vicariously traumatizing everybody feminist intersectional movement. Same thing. It's just the other side of the coin. Why do you expect one side of the coin to uphold their end of the bargain and not the other? We were saying the same things. I was saying the same things 12 years ago. I was saying the same high mind idioms that I was brainwashed to repeat in university. What was it? That, oh, so-called overt racism is better than colorblind racism. Well, we got what we wish for. What is, what is it that we got after that? Now, Lula, our supposed left-wing hero is censoring people. Lula, you know the nice, the nice guy. Uh, all of these, all of these guys. And what is this going to do? It's going to make it. See, the problem is that the left needs to sell people on being leftist. And what does that mean? That we're here. That we are here. From each to their, from each based on their ability to each based on their need. How are we going to sell that need? How are we going to sell that idea if? We ourselves don't follow these ideals. Now the left is normalizing, and that's because they're not really leftists. They're neoliberals. And look, look at what happens when it comes straight out of the out of their mouth. Kanye West, now known as Ye, who was removed. They're saying that they're removing Kanye West for saying supposedly anti-Semitic things. What was it that he said that was so crazy? I don't know. I'm I'm not following Kanye that much. But regardless of what he said, our society need to come together and fight for the very essence of democracy which is i don't care what you're talking about i will fight to the even if i disagree with what you're saying i will fight to the death to defend it who is willing to die for democracy now who is supposed and this and this is the thing democracy now who is willing to die for democracy now if we don't have freedom of speech democracy is nothing without freedom of speech there is no democracy without freedom of speech the supposedly democracy now people which i've been following which i've been following for many years because i'm supposedly a leftist they are normalizing they're normalizing censorship and what is the basis uh, on this what is the, what is their basis Look, the same kinds of words that are coming out of leftist practices okay leftist ideas of essentializing identity through intersectionality politics through standpoint epistemology through aff affirmative action those same when when we use basically it's when we use that point epistemology it's okay but when you use standpoint epistemology it's not okay no we are all human beings and look at how racist it is it's so incredibly racist to say that those types of people are not allowed to use standpoint epistemology, but we are. We are all tribal people. If you're going to have a tribe on one side, there's going to be a tribe on the other side. Denzel Washington said it. Morgan Freeman said it. Dave Chappelle said it. All of these people, uh, mostly black males, who have been saying that on my channel, I use their, their words a lot. Okay. Denzel Washington said it. Morgan Freeman said it. You know, stop, stop giving into tribalism. Whereas one side is allowed to give into tribalism and the other is not. And now look what's happening with the left with regards to this tribalism. They, they've tribalized so much that the feminists have broken up with themselves. They've broken up solidarity with themselves. Now the only value is neoliberalism. The only value is prostitution. The only value is money out of all of this. Well, guess what? Who is the strongest tribe out of all of these things in terms of group cohesiveness? 
It's not the left. And now you're wondering why the left can't get any votes? Well, for a series of anti-Semitic rants. For more, we're joined by two guests. Nora Benavides is a senior counsel and director of digital justice and civil rights at Free Press. And Imran Ahmed is CEO for the Center for Countering Digital Hate, which Musk is suing. Center for Countering, countering Digital Hate. Democracy. So this is the same guy who has been the man working to get COVID-19 conspiracy theories banned from social media. This is 2021. That's his main goal, okay? It's not just... So, Watch my video on Agamben. Agamben already warned us about all of this stuff. Agamben, if you don't know who that is, he's this philosopher that talks about biopolitics, okay? The same ideas that were motivating the left at some point. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, Imran, we're going to begin with you as Musk is suing you. Can you explain what you found and then your response to the lawsuit? So explain what you found. These people skew to st statistics, as we've been saying in my um, anti-psychology series, www.tinyurl.com slash anti-psychology. These people have been skewing statistics for 50 years. It's not just uh, psychology and soft science. It's happening in the hard sciences. Recently, a Stanford guy in physics, he was seen as making, as playing with numbers just so he can publish or perish because of publish or perish neoliberal science. Well, thank you for having me on. Um, uh, and just to clarify, we're not a British uh, watchdog. We're a, a US 501c3 headquartered in Washington, DC. We do have a British office as well. Um, and clearly, I'm British. Um, the work that we've done since the takeover by Elon Musk is to look at what happened when he took over. So what were the changes in the scale of hate and disinformation on this platform? And also their moderation of that hate and disinformation. All platforms have community standards. The question is that those standards, which are our responsibilities as users, um, and also therefore a reciprocal right that we expect others to abide by them as well and for the platform to enforce those rules, how effectively they, are they being enforced? Our first piece of work that you mentioned there was one that looked at the, the increase in the use of hate speech on that platform. So specifically at... Um... Okay, I'm just going to skip to the point that I wanted to say. Twitter have lost tens of millions of dollars since he took charge, but uh, ra despite that, or, or maybe because of it, uh, Musk says that he wants to change, expand the platform, now called X, into an everyday app uh, akin to China's WeChat, which includes not just messaging, but also uh, I'm not a big fan hosting, of Musk here. He, Musk is trying payments, to take videos, do his own takeover here uh, uh, and with other all, forms all this WeChat of, stuff. media and exchange. If you could uh, uh, comment on that. You know, if Mr. Musk has plans to expand his business, I wish him the luck. I wish him all luck with it i have no problem with him making money i have no problem with people doing business what i have a problem with is that so i have no problem with him make so the very thing i have a problem with musk right now he wants to make a wechat app which he doesn't have a problem with i don't have a problem with mr musk making the wechat app i don't have a problem with mr musk you know taking over everything monopolizing I don't have a problem with neoliberalism. I don't have a problem with people making profit. So you can see that this guy, this is just one hand of the, of the government, one hand of the CIA fighting the other hand. This is scary shit. What, what he has a problem with is a kind of WeChat that's a, you know, based on freedom. Okay, that's why we know that there's, that's why we know that within the government, okay, there's wars within the government. He wants to shape it in his image. When there is hate and disinformation being algorithmically amplified into billions of timelines, it's perfectly right that people that oppose the spread, the production and distribution of hate seek to research it. When, when somebody has this all ambiguous term like hate, okay, look at the full context. How, how much of a snake is this guy? He's such a snake. And how can democracy now? But the thing is, democracy now has been repeating this kind of bullshit for a very long time. He holds an MA in social and political science from Cambridge. Okay, so he's not... Imran is a trustee of the UK charity Victim Support. These kinds of people, they play on our emotions. They want us... They use people who are constantly vicarious traumatized. They use vicarious traumatization to shape these crocodile tears. We... The people who grew up with free internet, the children these days, they have no idea what free internet actually means. They grew up with a YouTube app that that minimizes and minimizes music unless you don't unless you pay for it. That's what they grew up with, but not us. Our YouTube app, this is just one example. Our YouTube app, we could minimize it. There was plenty of other third-party apps to use. That was just one example. Or what about the ability the what about the person who created Reddit? Aaron Schwartz, who was fighting for freedom of speech, was fighting for freedom of information. And now the same stuff is happening with AI. AI goes, or, you know, ChatGPT, they go into the internet and basically scrapes whatever. steals all of our information, right? The very concept of patents, the very concept of information, the very concept of property could be upheld, right? Could be upended, I mean. Upheld or up upended. There's a war going on, right? When... Uh, 
ChatGPT first started, it could, or when it was went online, it was easily able to go past those paywalls, but not anymore. Right? There is a war going on. The war is between people who think that AI and inf information freedom and blockchain are good things, and the people who want to maintain their patents power for another hundred years. The same kinds of patents that GMOs are using. The GMOs go into another farmer's fields, and then the people come and knock on your door and say, you are using our GMOs. You are using our patents. You need to pay us. The same patents that make plants that don't make new seeds. There's a whole story behind this. This is all connected. Censorship, patents, property rights, they're all connected. Either we have freedom of information and freedom of speech. Those two things should really be together. Freedom of information and freedom of speech. And what does that mean? That's what democracy means. That's what real democracy means, is that we all have access to information and we all have, it doesn't matter what the information is. You are able but the thing is, what, what they have done instead, they are destroying our minds with these short form videos. They are destroying our minds. They are dis destroying our ability to be critical, critical with affirmative action professors. They are destroying our minds to uh, think for ourselves. Instead, we, we've, we've lost our ability to have a long span of attention. We, the millennials, the people who grew up with the internet, the people who grew up with the rise of the internet, who are still able to have you know, long-term attention span to focus on many books. We're the only hope for the next generation. Don't let these people who play on your emotions, don't let these people play on your emotions using words, big ambiguous words like hate. They hate, okay? What's, what's the solution to hate? Censorship? More hate? The solution to hate has always just been love, okay? <laughs> it's always been free love. It's always been that way, but they can't have that. Thank you for paying attention and please continue with my anti-psychology series www.tinyurl.com slash anti-psychology.